all know about the occupation going on in, within the U.S. and outside of the U.S., the Occupy movement. Um, I was just wondering what you would say to, um, mostly we consist of a younger generation within Portland that are fighting essentially for the same things that you're talking about for saving the world while we can. Um, what would you say to us? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we would, we would say thank you, you know, because um, we know that the whole, everything we know is going to collapse. It doesn't have to be a, a hurtful thing. It doesn't have to be all destruction unless we choose to. The voices must be heard from the human people against all that that is destroying our future. So I, I take my hat off for you and all the people who have been there. As the demonstrations have been there, we've been praying in at Lake Atitlan and other places because that's my, that's my job. My job is to keep this fire alive. And so whenever the warriors come, you know, and we help them to be strong leaders. We had another man who came over that works with youth all around, very strong. He's over there doing those things. Come over to your mountain and felt the power of the spirit. But we got to look at something, uh, the no engagement. And just like Gandhi did, we got to stop buying all their stuff and we have to stop paying all their taxes and we got to stop keeping them accountable for what they're doing to our world. And that's where our, our declarations are so important. Our personal declarations, our clans declarations, our secret societies or our medicine society declarations, our consuls declarations is are really important because that's our voice. And we've done like 20 of those at the United Nations levels. The Maya continues to declare and it's like a front against the United Nations. It's like, you will hear us. Thomas Banyanka went to the United Nations four times. Three times they didn't know, even, even open the door. The fourth time with Oren Lyons and a few other chiefs, very few people in the audience from the United Nations to listen to the Hopi prophecies. After he was done, he left. A, a, a woman, a beautiful elder woman and a young maiden with a butterfly hair came and got him. Got him on horses and he left. That's the way he left, Thomas Manyanka. So it's our turn now. I'm glad to see that. But there's a danger. If the nations of the ego are destabilized, they will be five nations at war at each other. And so that's... Uh, that's a vision that came from Colombia. As the nations of the condor continue to strengthen, the connection to life must be kept at spiritual level or we're going to go through this destabilization. And that's, that's not the bigger danger. There's other nations waiting for us to stumble because we've done a lot of hurting all over. And so a lot of people are not forgetting that. So. It's important to find a peaceful uh, strength to, to make the changes and keep it stabilized. If we make it stable, because it's, oh yeah, revolution, we went through a revolution. We went through the wars. It doesn't lead to anything. It doesn't. We are in a worse shape after the wars than we, we never should have gone to war. And if we're going to go to war, you, got, you can't go sign treaties later because they will not respect them. We know that of the United States, 500 and some treaties that did not honor. So we have to find at the grassroots right here, the strength right now, right here, that's the power. Right here, no weapons, no, uh, you know, trying to break nothing, just create our own sustainability, our own uh, commerce, our own uh, monetary system, the place where they say, hey, 
If Nike doesn't change the way they do business, then we won't buy nothing from them. Simple. The same thing with all the other ones, but we got to come together say, uh, to, the, to the Latino community, the, the farm workers. I say, okay, man, let's do one month strike. No Latino people, no service people work. What do you think is going to happen to this country? <laughs> what is happening in Alabama right now? Boom. That's the power of the people. And that's us. But we have to become more spiritual. We've got to come from that spirit place where we don't want nothing from them. You know, it's good to go and do that because now it's, some people will have to do that. But others, we have to start finding out what is the solution. Gandhi showed us. Don't buy nothing from them. Don't sell them nothing. Don't talk to them. Nothing. IBM, no, no more. HP, no more. All that stuff. Don't pay your taxes, see what happens. They're going to arrest everybody? There's not enough prisons for that. Right? But we got to stay together and we can't have it destabilize. That's important. And that's what uh, is already happening. In every one of those prophecies they talk about, all that we know, this, remember the sunset is setting. All the things we know must go to a change. Our people are celebrating the change because it's an opportunity to Hey, the sixth sun is coming up. We maybe see it. They say our great, our grandchildren will start seeing the first rays of the new dawn. That's like 60, 70 years from now. The sixth sun will be the time of the people made out of honey. So today, as we are four colors, we're already more multicolors. There will be no difference. We will be people made out of honey, fluid, and, and golden, and uh, you know, as one. What does, how do we get honey? Collaboration, cooperation, positive reconstruction of everything. We're going to have to be busy. Get our skills up and get re to re re rejuvenate everything we've done. That's a lot of work and a lot of resources and a lot of opposition that don't, are gonna want, they're not gonna keep us, they wanna keep us from doing that. But we're gonna, we're gonna, we have like indigenous people have one thing still, the connection to the source beyond anything human. So no matter what comes at us, I tell you, I, I, I had a, one time they had an M60, you know, some of you guys been in the, in the war, right? The military, the M60 is a big machine gun. I, I had a video camera right here. If they would have seen it, I wouldn't be here. So on top of the pyramids, the mounds, there's a couple of those big M60s. A couple hundred of them like this, almost like all of us uh, walking with our banners and our ceremonials to go do a prayer at a sacred site called Isimche. And uh, so we're walking around and here's a line of soldiers. Another line of soldiers over here kind of keeping us from, if we're going to start shooting, nobody's going anywhere. Everybody's going to die right there in that plaza. But we just kept walking. And I have this video camera. I was, man, I was really hiding. If they would have seen it, boy, they would have fired on us. But I got them, you know, soldiers with those M60s. But we, we know the spirit, the, the clock, the, the Mayan calendar was telling. This is the time to engage put the gears in, ceremonial gears, into the relationship with the cosmos. Wake up the people. Send out the frequency that will touch their hearts. So somebody's been knocking on your door, I know. Right? You're sleeping and... Hey, come on in, all right? Yeah. Nobody there, but there's somebody there. You've been hearing the call. 25 years ago, we wouldn't see that many people from the Western world show up in our ceremonies. It was just our people, you know? And even then, we were kind of hiding because they didn't want us to do those things. And now, all humanity is trying to, hey, what's going on? Because nature has been engaged. 
She's in gear now. We ain't gonna stop that. The changes are there, and we we, we know all of them. We we see it. We witnessing them. Hey, we living through some of those. And you know what's happening. And it's now Mel Brooks, right? Or what's his name? Mel Gibbons. Mel Gibson. <laughs> 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 No Gibson's theory, right? Wow, everything's gonna boom, you know. Uh, we're celebrating, we're planting, we're creating centers. One time I was, uh, I know I had a couple questions here, but I told you, you know, the story's gonna go on. <laughs> so we're in Oklahoma, the elders in youth circle, and uh, Sock and Fox Nation. And so I'm looking at the arbor, you know, like really, I, you know, Spirit's telling me, he says, you gotta build one of these. Right? What am I gonna do with an arbor, right? So we're looking around the arbor and over there, uh, uh, Orrin Lyons kind of saw what I was looking at. He come over, you know, and says, Eric, this is going to be the last refugee place for humanity, this arbor right here. And what they're going to want is that fire. But we're going to have to take care of it. It's not for sale. It's not to be giving it away, it's not to steal it, it's to share it. To keep that fire alive, it takes a lot of beautiful loving because that's a spiritual home. And so that's how we are now. We're building refugee camps, preparing for humanity's soul to come to rejuvenate themselves. And that mission statement we came across in my office. I have a real fancy office. It's at the edge of Lake Atitlan. It's six posts and some touch, uh palms on top of the roof, you know. It's a palapa, you know. So there is my, my office and my desk and there's a hammock. So I lay in the hammock and I go to sleep. <laughs> I said to the spirit, okay, I'm in my office, I'm gonna hook in, you know. Got a plug and I plug into the spirit and then they talk to me. Then in that place, they told me these things, and we kind of refined it with our board, beautiful women. Uh, strong women, they have guided me and helped me to get this nonprofit so we can build these containers, these refugee places for humanity. So that's kind of our, our invitation to our people and uh, to welcome you. When you get there, you know, uh, you'll see that we get, everybody goes to work, chop wood and carry water. So then you have a good ceremony. So the next question is somewhere here. <laughs>